record on this computer. Is it recording? Oh, it is recording. All right. Uh, Mark and I have um, been diving deep into some weird uh, chest slash view behavior. Uh, and what Mark was first observing in a test he was writing uh, was um, just finding a component and asserting that the props are equal. If the test passed, it passed and that's good. But we're getting some really weird errors happen when um, the test was going to fail. So let me rerun this. And this was the error that was being shown. Yes, we would get that the proper method no type is not defined on the instance, but referenced during render. Very strange. Uh, but what we then observed was related to that was, um, and when, especially when Mark was added a debugger, was when we're trying to do this pretty print of the diffs because there's something wrong, the pass failed, so we're gonna print a nice pretty message to the end user. Uh, we are um, trying to pull, one of the plugins for pretty format is DOM element to see, hey, is this even a DOM element that we can start reading from? So I started looking for a no type and tag name and that's what's throwing this error. Because as we all know, in view if, in a template, if you reference something that's not actually defined on it, it'll blow up. The way this works is it creates a proxy when everything first get initialized to, hey, when we try to get something, if it doesn't actually exist, um, then we're going to uh, throw a warning and our tests blow up when there's warnings. Um, so we we're trying to, I was trying to create an isolated example to recreate this. And I ended up creating some components similar to what uh, Mark had um, where we were having some data that we're passing down to a child component. I originally had it as a template and then we we're trying now with the render function. But, um, and I've called these inline child and inline test. So let me undo what I was doing here. Uh, so these components will actually cause it to print the nice, pretty error message as we would expect. Great. Um, so what is going on? And one of the main differences that I then realized between Mark's environment and this using just inline functions, like or inline just creating components off the fly like this, was that Mark's components were coming from different files. So I then moved these to different files. Um, and when you when we use the ones that are loaded, so let me change these instead of the inline ones. I guess we called it loaded test component and loaded child component. Um, then it was blowing up. So what could possibly be going on? And yeah, so then it blows up with the no type issue. And um, one thing to be aware of is that view and just uses view loader. And so the end results that are actually getting imported when you import a dot view file look something like this. And we were then so that we could just play around with this stuff. I then copied these values over to their own functions. Um, but uh, the one thing we realized that makes all the difference is with stripped. So if I use these, these um, inline versions of what actually gets loaded, this would fail. But when I change it to with stripped equals false, it'll show the pretty diff. Yeah, so if I do with stripped instead of true, if we do with false, and we have another one, uh, it's over here. Yeah. Now these, this will work. And so what we've observed, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we've observed what's actually going on is when we have with stripped, 
as true, the proxy that gets created, it only creates this get handler. When it's false, it only creates the has handler. Um, and what Mark and I are kind of wondering is why not, why don't we always have the has handler? And maybe that'll help with our, uh, um, when we're trying to iterate through these properties uh, or something like that. Um, do you have anything to add, Mark? I was just digging into the history of this and I found, I've linked you in the chat, there's a, a link to um, an older version of, so the latest version of view loader doesn't have this and I don't know why, it must be buried in some dependency somewhere, but um, this older version does write this out and this is where it's coming from. Uh, but there's not much detail about it, it just says mark with stripped, this enables you to use the correct runtime proxy detection. So I then looked at the history of the proxy uh, object in view, which you had open a bit earlier, uh, Paul, can you go back to that? Yeah, this one? Yeah, so if you go to the blame of this. And this is an old, or oh, this is a semi-old commit. Right, but <laughs> the, if you scroll down and click on the commit for that uh, ternary, that's from four years ago. So this is really old, this logic. This hasn't changed in a long time. Uh, and even the previous version was doing basically the same thing. Hmm. So this is a long standing sort of implementation uh, yeah. detail. Um, yeah, sure is. Um, but I didn't get any further than that. You know, I haven't figured out why, like why wouldn't we want both the get and has hooks on the proxy always. Um, right. I can understand, I can understand maybe why we wouldn't want the git, but I feel like, I feel like, you know, if you do have the git, why not also have the has? Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I guess having the has hook uh, wouldn't stop this um, weird no type error from appearing. It's just this get hook yeah. that's causing it. And, and one, one definitely related contributor to this, and then we can stop recording, is when, um, yeah, so this is the one where it's working. When it is trying to, um, if I console log one of the props that it's trying to serialize, come on, just. If I console log one of the props that's trying to serialize, I get my values because these are the serializable values. But if I do something like object got get own property descriptors, which is what pretty format does, I will see that there is the beautiful observer property that it's trying to iterate through and figure out what to do with this. Ideally, we can just always ignore this in pretty format, which we really, really should. I don't know how to do that either. So there's, there's, there's multiple things going on here for sure. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if you already covered this, Paul, but um, one sort of workaround is rather than using to equal, we can use to match object. Yes. And that sort of works around this because it then no longer needs to traverse the entire tree of the uh, received object. Right, and it just does it based on the expected bit. Um, Presumably, yeah. Right, now, depending on like what my objective was, if I was really, really, like maybe I was doing a V bind and I really wanna make sure, well, that these props are just these props. I imagine you could also do something like to equal, but then do inside of things like an expect dot object match or whatever. So you can, because it is just this nested bit that's causing the issue. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how to do I think that. I think the problem would still be the same because the received object, the child component props, um, it's the the pretty diff printer is still going to descend into the child properties of the observer, which then reaches into uh, the wait, are you right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're right. 
let's try that out. Then I'm surprised that two match object even works. Because uh, why are well, we? Well, I guess I'm guessing because to match object doesn't need to descend into the all properties of the receiver uh, of the received object. It basically it bases it off the expected one. I'm guessing here. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, really interesting. Because it only needs to look at the properties on the expected one. If there's any additional properties on the received one, it doesn't care. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, boom. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point. Uh, I think that we could probably solve this at the just reporting level. Like for some reason we could, it, we need to be able to tell it not to look at certain things, whether we're using two equals or two match object, uh, which would be nice. Um, it's also worth noting actually that this is only a problem for us because in GitLab, we uh, fail tests when console.error is called. Um, if it weren't for that additional detail, this would just be logged as an error, but the test would still run. Not necessarily. We remember we we also observed else we we observed otherwise. We can jot dive into that. Um, do you know where that file where we do it? Uh, uh, it it's environment.js. Okay. Environment.js. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to comment this bit out. Okay. I think it's console.error that's called, but. Oh, I thought it was console.warn. I can't remember. There's only one way to find out. Um, so this one I am doing two equal. That's my little console log. Is it? It is console error. Oh gosh, you're so right. I'm sorry, man. I doubted you. It's a view warning on console.error. Obviously, come on. <laughs> and the warnings with an error. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Do you remember there was more stuff? Oh wait, no, these are just errors. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. Yeah, so it's it's doing oh. the right thing. It's just it's so it's a it's a confluence of oh. view oh, um, so when not in production checking um, for property accesses oh. and changing that behavior depending on whether you are using a view loaded component or a, a yes. component with a template literal, I guess. Yeah. Um, so and our setup of of throwing a, failing a test when console to error is called. Yeah. Oh man. Um, so I wonder if I could do. And remember, we we talked about this. Is this how you do it? Is this right? So I'm editing our little plugin here. Uh, so. Only do this if val and I have a node type as a property. Uh, that should also fix it. Like, so I'm not even going to try to pull from here now. You know what I mean? Yes, I agree. It should fix it. Let's see. We got an, I remember we had another one of these weird things. Oh no, these are still the same thing. Is that how you, is that? Oh, but we haven't done the has bit, so maybe that's causing issues. Um, anyways, or maybe has own property isn't necessarily the right thing to be looking for here. I wonder if I do, let me try one more thing. If I do no type is inval. Uh, oh, and no type, oh, this is a not. I want to be val and it's not. That is, would be one reason why it would fail. <laughs> oh gosh, what's wrong? With Why did the test take too long suddenly? I don't know, maybe has on property is an expensive operation. Maybe it had to do some building of things. Yeah, but that does fix it. It does. We don't get any errors. 
Um, and that would be an interesting upstream fix too here is to, because clearly we're saying that no type, I don't know if tag name is important. Oh yeah, clearly we're saying, clearly we, we're requiring no type. So at the very least we can just add an if here and be like, okay, if we don't have no type, don't move forward. And then we would be fine. But all of it is very flaky and weird. Anyways, thanks for watching, I guess. <laughs>